In 1987, I was still in the third year of the theater school in Arnhem. And we were playing a performance called uh, Woman in the Sand from Kobo Abe. We had this performance in Amsterdam and then a casting director was there to look at us. After the performance, she came to me and she said, my name is Jeanette Snick and I'm, I'm, tr I'm doing a casting for George Schlauser and he's looking for an actress. And are you interested to, to come and to do a screen test? And I said, yeah, it's fine. So I went there and Eugène Barefoots was there. George asked me to play two scenes and one scene was from the part of Lineke his second girlfriend in the film, and one scene was from Saskia. It was funny and it was light and I felt free. And when we were finished, George phoned me very soon after that and he said, well, I choose you for the leading part. He suddenly found something in me. He thought that's perfect for the part. I also know that I look a little bit like his daughter. And he was looking for a woman with red hair. So I colored my hair for the film. And I had this, all these little curls. Of course, I have these little spots, which he liked very much. And, and he liked the spirit. <laughs> George asked me, how do you want to prepare this film? Because he knew it was my first time. Do you want to work with an acting coach? And I said, yes, please, I would love to do that. So he invited me, He invite, and, uh, so he asked Faride Farjan, an acting coach, to work with me. And we worked four weeks on the script. And I worked four weeks on my character. <laughs> he had told Faride, her character is like a beautiful butterfly. She's light and playful. And the moment you want to grasp her, she's gone. But inside this butterfly, there is a deep, dark side. My nachtmerrie. Vannacht heb ik het weer gedroomd. Van het gouden ei. Dat je opgesloten zat in het gouden ei en niet uit kon en eeuwig alleen door de rente. Ja, afschuwelijk is dat die eenzaamheid. The first thing she said is, I want you to write a biography of your character. And I did. I was a very good uh, schoolgirl. <laughs> I did all the homework and I wrote a huge biography where she was born, where she came from, what happened with her life until the moment she, she starts uh, in the story of the film. And the story with her boyfriend, what she wants from life, the things she likes, and this made all uh, everything very personal and, um, yeah, rich. George asked us to come to France one week before we start shooting. And he asked Eugène, who plays Rex, and he asked Ben Pierre Donadieu, who plays Mr. Le Morne. We went to the south of France and we worked every day together, the, the, the four of us. We talked about the film, about the story, about the characters. And he also wanted to see how the three of us were together in daily life. He wanted to know us, because George is an actor's director. He wants to know who you are, and that's what he uses for the film. I'm in the film for only 11 minutes, all together, and my part with uh, Rex is okay. probably maybe eight minutes. So it was a very short time to show what the relation is between the two people. So we worked very precise on, on, on every second, every minute in the scene. I knew, because I worked with George and with uh, my acting coach, that we had to show the audience that the relationship between Saskia and Rex is a very intense relationship. They love each other very much, but they are also very insecure about the future, about what's going to happen. And there's also this power game between the two of them going on. You know, who is the smartest, who is the most funniest. Uh, um, it's what we all do in life, the, the, these kind of little games. When you see the movie, even though you have not much time, you see a lot. For example, there is this scene at the gas station when Saskia is going to buy some drinks and then she comes back. And then she has this little game with coins. She wants to bury coins near the tree and she throws her friend on the grass and she asks him, how much do you love me? And do you like me? How much do you like me? And 
After this game, they, sh they shake hands, and then you see there is a close-up of Saskia. It's a very strange close-up because so suddenly, after she made a sort of love with her boyfriend, you see that she's anxious, that there is something strange going on with her, insecure or whatever. Or maybe you see that she is afraid of the relationship. So some, somewhere you see that she's scared. And I know exactly what I'm doing. And I know exactly what George asked me to do. And all these little things together build a very rich character in a very short time. Rex, what is that? The scene in the tunnel is almost like a flash forward, unconscious. Benzine. Nee, nee, nee. Rustig. Dit is mijn schuld, maar dat doet er nu absoluut niet toe. Dit is heel erg gevaarlijk. You know that something is going wrong. What you also see is the difference between the two characters. Er ligt staat aan Saskia. Je alarmlicht, er zit toch zo'n knipperlicht nee, op? Nee, er zit geen knipperlicht op deze auto. Kijk nou wat er van komt van je stomzinnige gedrag. Ik zei het nog. Ja, geen paniek in godsnaam, hè? That they are not able to find a solution in, in this bad situation. They both go their own way. De lantaarn. Ik pak de lantaarn. Wat voor lantaarn? Ik heb een zak lantaarn ingepakt. Jezus Christus, een lantaarn. Saskia, er kan ieder moment iemand bovenop ons zitten. Ik moet die lantaarn vinden. Kom nou mee, godverdomme. Blijf vanaf. Ga jij maar. Saskia does not really forgive Rex for what happened in the tunnel. There is this little close-up where suddenly you see that she's scared or that she's afraid of something. Or maybe she thinks, I don't know if I can really trust you because that what happened just before I will never forget. Maybe this was a break in their relationship. Je vous remercie, Monsieur Hoffman. When you see Saskia, you see outside, you see a very happy person. She loves life, looking for adventure. Why Le Morne picked Saskia, um, we will never know. You can also say that Saskia picked him. That's also true. When they are near the coffee machine, I know that when we, when we had to do this scene, I said to George, there's one moment I really find very difficult to play. I said, because, okay, I am putting my coins in the machine. Then I turn my back and suddenly I start to talk to this man. Why am I doing this? Pardon, monsieur. Vous parlez français? Je suis français. Um, je passe as, uh, assez uh, franc pour le tomate. Avez-vous uh, changé pour moi? I asked him before to, to change some money, but then I, then I had the, the money and I could have go back to, to Rex. But this is the character. The character is very spontaneous and she goes from one second, from one moment to the other moment and then and she turns around and she looks in his eyes and she said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to drive a car. She is playful. That's the, that's the character. Je va conduire à l'autoroute pour la première fois. C'est très bon, hein? Parler français. Mon ami dit toujours que je dois essayer. Essayez. Es Essayez. Vous parlez très bien le français. Non. Vous êtes un euh, menteur. Menteur? Oui. <laughs> the relationship between me and Ben Apierre was was a not a very easy relationship, and that had to do with the kind of persons we were. I was very shy. I was very young. Naive. It was my first film. And of course then you're insecure. But at the same time, of course I knew that I was able to do it, even though I had not much experience. But Ben Apierre was a very, very a strong personality. And he likes to shout and to be present in a, in a room. So, for example, if Ben Apierre would enter a, a restaurant, he would say, hello, here I am. You know, and, and I would answer and nobody would notice me. And Ben Apierre was very insecure about me playing the part because he had never seen my work. And he, that's what I found out later on. He was very afraid that I was not good enough to be opposite of him. Right. I can understand. And, uh, but the, on the third or fourth day, the situation became uh, unbearable. And, um, and I, was, I, was, I felt very unhappy. 
because Ben Appiah did not listen to me when I said something and he made stupid jokes and, and I thought this is not going to be nice to work together, but really not nice. It was so bad that I decided to go home. <laughs> and I said to, ben, to, to George, I said, George, I'm really unhappy about the situation. I, I, I don't like to work together and uh, I don't like his behavior and he doesn't treat me very well and uh, he doesn't want to speak English, he only wants to speak French. My French is terrible and if this is going to be the situation then I prefer to buy a train ticket and to go home and then maybe it's better that you ask somebody else to play my role. <laughs> Can you imagine that I would have gone home? George said, okay, I understand what you're saying. And then in the end of the day, George came back and he said, well, I talked to Ben Apierre and I explained him that for his character, it's necessary that he becomes somebody who is almost invisible. Somebody who's very nice, charming, because he is going to play a very mean, mean person. But what I want to see is the opposite. And from that moment on, Ben Pierre behaved very nice and very sweet. And I remember the first day when we went to the set and I had to play my scene with uh, uh, Eugène, who plays Rex. He came to the set and he, he was laying on the, on the grass and he looked at us while we were rehearsing and while we were shooting. And after the after the shot was finished and the day was and, the, and and it was the end of the day, he said, "Johanna, can I ask you to come with me and uh, and drive with me home?" I said, "Yeah, of course." And then he said, "You are a very good actress." I said, "Thank you very much." Monte. Pardon? Monte. I remember very well when I saw the film the first time, when it was finished, and I was really shocked. I walked out of the cinema and I was really angry. And I said to George, why do you want to make a film like this? Why? What do you want to tell the people? Why? Is, it, is the world so dark? I mean, why? But I also saw at the same time that it was a very good film. Very strong, well played and very well made. For me, it was very important that in that year, in 1989, we had the first European Film Academy uh, Award. I was nominated for Best Supporting Actress of Europe, and then I got the prize. What I learned from working with George is that method acting is a very, very good way to prepare a role and a situation. I mean, it influenced my career and the way I work on a set. It's very important to make things personal and to be authentic and to be true. I saw the film yesterday and it still works, even though it's a little bit difficult for me to look at because I know so much of the backstory. But I can still see that the film works and it's a real classic.